Hello. A while ago I made this Sky Hunter style plane using the stacked slices method which is where you take lots of little slices of XPS building foam and you glue them together to make the overall shape and this is quite a handy way to make a complex shape that you would otherwise need a large CNC machine and molds and stuff like that to do um, but you can get it done with fairly simple tools the drawback is that it's quite a lot of work as I found out in this particular design because I made the entire wings of stacked slices so the slices go through in the, the same direction as these lines are shown on the wings here I'll put a link in the description to a video um, where I'm actually explaining this a little bit more detail how I came up with the uh, method of converting the files to to do this in the CAD files and everything but anyway I thought I'd give it a try again but I didn't really want to make the entire wing from stacked slices this time um, the reason I went for this design like this is that having a nice straight wing like this makes it easy to put a spar down the middle. Um, so yeah, straight line down here is very handy. But getting back to the original plane that I had been playing around with in this Open VSP software, this is the vehicle sketch pad that we're looking at. Um, this is, I think this is, I have a few files sitting around, I think this is one of the first ones that I was designing and I just twiddled around with it until the numbers looked really good and it had a really nice efficient glide slope and so on. Uh, and I thought ideally if I could make anything that I wanted to with a big CNC machine I might try something like this. But as far as the stack slices method goes it's not very convenient because it has some twist, uh, you know, wash out in the wingtips and it's got these nice curved wingtips like that, winglets. Um, and there was another problem as well. Oh, it's very thin and there's some sweep. So there's quite a lot of complexity going on in the wing shape which makes it quite hard to do in the stacked slices method. Um, and as I mentioned, with this one, with, when you have a nice straight wing, it's very easy to get the spar down in the middle. Oh, and I also noticed that having a perfectly straight trailing edge made it easier to construct things like the ailerons and just to make, just to get everything symmetrical and lined up. So I thought, what if I took this design, basically just changed the positions of these leading edge points here so that the trailing edge was straight. And that gave me this. Uh, well, I've put the... Yeah, I thought I'd also be a smartass and just put the vertical stabilizers on the bottom only just to be just to be a contrarian, basically. But anyway, this, this is what we're looking at here. is If you took this and you moved each of these chord sections so that the trailing edge was straight you would get this. And um, I kind of like the look of this and I also found when I ran the numbers in the analysis um, this VSP aero thing it actually more efficient than this one as well. So I thought well that's pretty cool maybe I'll pursue this a little bit further but it still has the washout and the dihedral and the sweep uh, so to make make this wing I haven't really solved any problems but I th thought I would try a little bit harder to make something from this so I did away with the curved winglet pieces and I reduced the number of individual sections here so we've got one two three four five in total I reduced that to just three and made it so that the wing was something that I could cut with a hot wire so this is what I've ended up with. Not quite as sexy looking, although when you see it in the flesh, as we'll see later on in the video, uh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, so it has a very, very straight trailing edge. Um, same fins going downwards only in the middle. Um, and there is a little bit of twist in this wing still, but the important point is, even though there's twist, at any given point along this wing, let's see if I can hit him there. there we go. So in this final section, from here to the wingtip, there are only straight lines. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Which means that this section here can be done with a hot wire cut, the same way as you do a normal hot wire cut. And as long as you make some nice templates to make sure that you're getting the right amount of twist. Uh, so as you can see here hopefully the wing tip is actually angled downwards by six degrees relative to the root there uh, so that was 
just to hopefully make sure that when it stalls it doesn't have a nasty tip stall like the Skywalker Falcon which actually has no twist I, I discovered when I looked at that it's probably why it has that nasty stall um, yeah so hopefully the stall will be a bit, little bit more gentle like that and also this upward angle here at the at the trailing edge uh, will I think contribute a little bit to the reflex effect which is something that you're going to need in a flying wing um, if you're not familiar with this stuff um, Uncle Bruce did a pretty good video on how flying wings work a while ago so I'll put a link to that in the description as well and yeah speaking of reflex we also really kind of do need to have an airfoil that has some reflex in it which is what I've used here it's uh, MH64 airfoil which is um, sort of intended for flying wings and for the middle sections here the the red where this red line is at the moment I've actually just stretched it vertically so if we look at it this way it's not really an MH64 anymore it's sort of vertically stretched so it's a bit more of an egg shape um, but yeah everything except for the tip itself is MH64 just at different different thicknesses yeah and then the wing tip I've actually changed I'm not sure why this file is like this but uh, you can see it has a bit of reverse camber here but I actually changed that to be uh, changed it to zero and you can see now we have a symmetrical airfoil at the tip so that's a, that's what I actually went with anyway enough waffle about this uh, I think you have <laughs> heard enough to understand what the uh, motivation for this was all about so let's just see it being made Okay, I have the central section removed now, and the next step is to make some cuts here for the hatch 
the cover to come off and I had to think carefully about what the next step was actually because it's a little bit different to my last build the last build I just had the middle two sections being the hatch but this one because it's much wider the fuselage is much wider and it's actually a fair bit shorter in the uh, front to back dimension um, I'm going to make the hatch with these four sections like this um, and there's a bit of a problem there because um, I don't want to I want to have the top sections all nicely stuck together when I cut them ideally so that they're not sort of all bumpy and out of place but I don't want to glue the whole thing together because I can't hot wire cut through after the Gorilla Glue is there because it's just sort of gets really gets in the way of the hot wire and another issue is that I can't hot wire cut from the outside like this because the line that I want to cut is not actually that line it's more like a, uh, a zigzag line like this but because this outer um, slice is not quite as tall as the one in the middle I couldn't mark it exactly how I wanted so that one there that's the mark that I want to cut but I won't be able to see that from here and it's very difficult to mark it on this curved surface so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue this piece and this piece together but only on the the section here where the uh, the lid is going to be so that'll be these two glued together and then these two glued together and then I'll make my hot wire cut from this side, from the inside on using that mark and that mark and that'll give me two pieces of the hatch together and then hopefully I can just sort of line them up nicely like that and glue all four pieces together and then <laughs> then when I've done that I'll be okay to glue the middle piece together um, and then I can sand that, so there's quite a few steps and you've got to sort of think about how you're going to do it all in which order um, but I want to glue this piece in there to be the battery strap sort of mounting piece and the flight controller mounting section but I have to sand this section before I glue it in because it's not flat so this is just sort of, I can't really glue it at the moment so that has to be glued before I can sand it so anyway um, yeah, you get the idea. It's a, it's a lot of thinking about how everything's going to be done. And along the way you sort of lose a few handy features like when I cut this section out here, I lost two of my, my pinholes like these. So these are very handy to position things, obviously, and two of them are gone. So there's, there was actually nothing at the front, so I just made another hole for one of these small 5mm dowels um, inside here just to sort of position that together. Uh, anyway, I think it's turning out alright so far. There's a hole there for the um, motor wires to go out from there. Maybe we can see there. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along, let's uh, let's do it. All right, now I've just got to glue those together. Alright, it's time to do something about attaching the wings to the fuselage now and my original plan was to make them detachable and have a spar going through here somehow. That's what I was doing the testing of in one of my videos recently with you know, trying to break a piece of balsa with carbon uh, on the side of it and stuff. 
um, and that would have worked okay, but it's kind of tricky to arrange for attaching it with a nice strong connection into the fuselage because all the fuselage has there is that. And these, um, this other sort of spar thing, this goes all the way through the fuselage, but when it gets to here, it's only going to be able to go to about here, so it's pretty much useless for strengthening. Um, it's only, only good for positioning as like a peg to get in the right place. Likewise with this one going in there, because um, it's too thin and it can't go straight there because the wings got a really, really nice twist in it. They turned out really good, um, much better than, better than I expected. So that's another reason I don't really want to put a spar down here, because I'd have to cut a nice big um, chunk out of it. And I just think that would probably ruin the nice shape that I've got. Um, so I don't think I'm going to go with a detachable wing, which is a pity because one of the other things that that would have been um, would have let me do is change the vertical stabilizers. So I wanted to try experimenting with different types of vertical stabilizers, like maybe having them on the bottom or on the top, or top and the bottom. And if the wings were detachable, I could just take take the wing off, uh, make a new vertical stabilizer and put it in and then put the wing back on and test it, see what see what it did. Um, so I'm going to have to give up on that I think and what I'll do is I'll just make the wings permanently attached to the fuselage and I'll just try and use the fiberglass skin along with some of that unidirectional carbon probably on the bottom, at least on the bottom, probably on the top as well um, and just hope that the skin, the fiberglass skin will hold everything together enough so that it's not going to break and that will make things much easier from a construction point of view um, and to do my experiments with changing the vertical fins I might just make a plywood piece that goes in here and it sticks up a little bit with some points where I can screw in um, vertical stabilizers and just attach them after the fact and uh, hopefully it won't be too weird and um, yeah, that's what, I'll, that's what I'll go with and it'll make things much nicer. I'll be able to sand this all as one piece and get it nice and flush um, before I do the fiberglassing so that will, yeah, it'll turn out much nicer and cleaner aer aerodynamically around this area I think if I do it that way. Okay, I have the fuselage all glued together now, and it's looking pretty good. I haven't done anything for the trailing edge here yet because I'll do that after I glue the wings on, I think, so I can get everything nice and straight and lined up. Uh, the wings are over here, I have the servo pocket in there ready to go now, and I'm just sort of thinking about what I'm going to do for the vertical stabilizers, the vertical fins here. Um, and I wanted to experiment with these, like put them on the bottom, put them on the top, see what the difference is. So what I've decided to do for that is put a couple of sort of mounting hard points, if you like, for the fins to go on. And this is just my first, first iteration draft for probably the first one I'll try going on the bottom like that. Uh, but if I just take that off, you'll see how that other piece will sit on there like that. So it's going to sit there and these little bumpy bits um, are sticking out to of course screw sideways whatever fins you want. Um, and I'm thinking that I'm mostly going to try putting them on the bottom so I didn't put too many mounting points on the top here, just the one there. Um, and the reason I didn't make the mounting points like this piece at the bottom just go straight across, uh, I've got it dipping in and then out and then in and then out again and that's because I want to put a big piece of fiberglass all the way across from the middle right across this join out onto the wing 
and if there was a big fence in the way that would be kind of annoying but hopefully these smaller pieces here they're not that wide just a few centimeters so hopefully just a little slit in the fiberglass should be able to lay, lay down quite nicely over those and obviously on the bottom as well trying to keep it mostly flat because that um, this is where that fiberglass is supposed to be adding quite a lot of strength so I don't want to have the fiberglass stop and be cut and then continue on the other side of this fence thing so anyway I think you get the idea. Um, so what I'm thinking is that this plywood here, this is 3mm plywood, I did amazingly get the grain going the right way this time, I usually don't have the presence of mind to do that. Um, but even so, <clears throat> even so I don't think it's going to be strong enough as is. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of layers of carbon tape, the plain weave tape on each side, uh, one that way and one 45 degrees, and make a sort of a sandwich with the plywood. And I'm hoping that that will be nice and strong. In fact, well, I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, and I'm also hoping that when I try and drill the holes into it again, the carbon's not going to go all all messy and fray at the edges. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. This little hole here is for the servo cable to come from the wing through the middle of this bit into the hole inside there. And it comes out at that point there which is a little bit of a problem because it's a nice straight channel until it gets to here and then it goes a sort of a crooked, well, a right angle corner and then a hook shape like that. And it's impossible to get the servo cable all the way through just by pushing it so what I've had to do is put a little 5mm nut on the end of a piece of string and that can usually come through in the middle like that and then I'll just have to pull the servo cable in from the outside with this. Well I'm going to have to finish this video here. I have made quite a bit more progress on this plane and I'll have another video coming up very soon after this one but my internet connection is just so terrible and I didn't want to upload any files bigger than this one all in one go. Anyway this photo here will give you a look at what the plane looks like with the wings uh, stuck on and um, we'll see that next time. Until then, thanks for watching.